guys today we'll be going through the book of romans and it's all gonna be about keeping your spiritual fire you know a lot of times we know how to get the fire but we don't know how to keep the fire just like um it's if we look at the world empires that existed before um in the past it was easier to conquer than to keep the empire solid and before we start going through this teaching on how to get our fire, let's just invite the Lord and pray that this word really speaks to you. And we really pray that the Lord speaks to you through this, through this word and I'll also intercede for you. And if there's something you're going through, that the Lord will come for you and help you. So Lord Jesus, we thank you for these viewers and we thank you for the people of this group, Father. Lord Jesus, I pray for anyone that is viewing this, Lord God. You know them. You know the things they are going through. You see the battles that they are going through, Father God. And you see the hardships. And you see, Father God, the hindrance and the attacks of the enemy upon your children that are viewing this thing, Father. I pray, Lord Jesus, for them. Strengthen them. Protect them. Watch over them. And give them a desire to come closer to you, Father. And I pray that this word, Father God, will speak to everyone, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father God, that you will fight for these people and that you will be with them, Father, and that you'll never leave them nor forsake them. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's straight, let's start. Camry, if you can read for me. Uh, Romans 12, 11 through 13. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. Practice hospitality. Amen. Let's keep it once again trying to find. Okay. So it's the book of Romans. I think it's only Romans. Let me find it just to make sure. Romans 12. Hmm. I might have got the verse wrong. Just give me a second. Um, okay, the verse is Romans 12, 11 to 13. Yeah, that's the right verse. So Romans 12, 11 to 13. Hmm. Okay, so it was just a difference in translation. Um, okay, let's go back. So it's Romans 12, 11. It, actually, the New Living Translation says, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord enthusiastically. Um, the other one in the King James Version says, not, sloth, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. It, the other one says, um, never lag, in zeal and in earnest endeavor, be a glow and burning with the spirit serving the Lord, burning with the spirit. That is the verse that I was looking at. But basically Romans 12, 11 to 13, Romans 12, 11 says, never let the fire in your heart go out, keep it alive and serve the Lord. So today we'll be looking at how to keep your fire. And I'm gonna get into more details about this how to keep your fire. So, you know, I just read the verse in Romans 12, 11. It says that never let the fire in your heart go out. Keep it alive and serve the Lord. So first of all, before you have to keep the fire, you gotta be able to get it, right? Why would you worry about your fire going out if you don't even have a fire? So we all, we all know how to build fire. We all know how to receive fire for the Lord. We all know how to get on fire for the Lord. And if you don't know, 
fine. I will tell you how you get the Lord and how you get spiritual fire and how the fire of the Lord will be able to change your thinking, your attitude, your reaction, and how the fire of the Lord will be able to change you and change your whole thinking. So first of all, before we look at how you must keep your fire as a believer, let's look at how you can build that fire and how you can ignite that fire. You know, we all know things like prayer and fasting and worshiping and denying the flesh and cutting down worldly things and removing worldly friend, reading, meditating and researching on the word and constantly and walking in a life of continuous sacrifice. And there has to be an increase, an exponential increase of the Lord in your life for the fire to be ignited. So before we look at how you can keep your fire, how you can keep the attitude, the behavior, the reaction, and the soldier thinking, the warfare thinking of your fire. I've taught you how you can build the fire. There has to be an increase. You got to increase in prayer. The amount of time you spend in prayer of the Lord times it by two. The amount of times you spend in giving times it by two. The amount of times you spend in fasting times it by two and times it by four and times it by six and keep on going and you will see a change. And as you do these things, as you allow the Lord to have more time in your life, as you allow the Lord to have more time, to have more space in your finances, and as you allow the Lord to have more of you, you'll start to feel differently over a period of time. And you'll feel like you've gone a level above than you were the month before. It means that you've built something. It means that you've increased the fire. And I've just taught you how you can increase your fire is by doing what you are doing and timesing it by two for the Lord. And when you achieve times and get by two, you just times it by four again. You just keep going up and you keep walking exponentially. And you keep growing exponentially. And now let's look at how this is an effective way that I have witnessed on how you can keep your fire for the Lord. And I feel like having a schedule, a system, not a religious schedule, but some type of foundation in your life to keep the spiritual fire going. And if we go in the book of Daniel, you know, Daniel 6.10. Now Daniel knew that the writing was signed. He went home. And in his upper room with his window open toward Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since his early days. So we can see that him, Daniel himself, one of the greatest biblical characters, prophetic, he wrote a prophetic book and we all know about Daniel but we can all see that Daniel himself had some kind of foundation he had some kind of devotion to his life I mean this is a busy man this is a man of political influence in a demonized country empire under the power of the enemy so Daniel had the position to backslide he had the position to lose his fire. He had the position to lose his fire. He had the position to lose his relationship with God, but he didn't. And we can see that God, we can see that God had worked through Daniel in different ways. And in this verse, we can see why Daniel didn't lose his fire, why Daniel was still with God, why Daniel did not backslide. It's because he had a devotion with God. He prayed three times a day. And it says that there was this custom since his early days. I am not talking about a religious schedule. It's not a religious schedule that I'm speaking about. I'm talking about a devotion. The reason you don't, the reason you never miss your morning prayer is because you've been doing it your whole life. 
or since the day you got saved? Why, even though you don't feel great, even when you don't feel well, even when you feel packed up, even when you feel oppressed and attacked, every morning you still do your morning prayer. It's because you have placed a foundation of a devotional life that you have, you have placed a schedule on your life as a believer. It's not a religious schedule. I'm going to get into it. So as I said, I told you that you can build that spiritual fire. It's, it's not, I mean, it's not the easiest thing to, to, to go up a level in your relationship with the Lord because it requires a lot of sacrifice. But the thing that is even more difficult is after you've done all the prayer, after you've done all the fasting, after you've done all the interceding, the thing that will be harder as, is when you get to the next level, it will be to keep that level and not get demoted and not lose that fire that you once came through all the fasting and prayer you went through. I'm not talking about the days where you, you feel attacked for maybe for two days. I'm talking about last month, you had the desire, you had the fire, you had the motivation to preach to everyone in the mall. And then the next month, you just feel dry. You even skate to speak to your friend about Jesus. So that is the kind of thing I'm speaking about. I'm not talking about a day where you're just getting attacked. No, I'm talking about the days. I'm talking about a phase uh, in your life where last month, I mean, you were just on fire. I mean, last month you were ready to preach. I mean, last month you were ready to beat every single spirit in hell. And then you get to the next month, you just feel dry. I mean, you have no desire to fight. You have no desire to read the word. Why do you go up and down? Why do we go up and down? Again, I'm not saying it's that one day you're getting attacked. I'm making it clear that there are certain phases in our life that after you've grown in your spiritual walk, you have to keep that fire. I told you the example that you go for one month, you're just blazing hot. And then the next month, you're just dry, just dry. I mean, just dry. You have no desire to pray. You have no desire to go to church. You have no desire. I mean, you are just dry. The enemy attacks you and he sneak and he destroys what you had built through the Lord. So once you've gone up a level, the Lord, the, the enemy wants to bring you down that level. Once you've been promoted, the enemy wants to demote you. So we need to learn how to keep that state of thinking. Just a month before you had the mindset of a warrior. But this month, you have the mindset of a warrior. So the Lord wants us to keep the fire. He wants us to keep this warfare mindset continuously as we walk, as we walk as believers on this earth. So we need to have some type of schedule, not a religious schedule, but you need to know that on a Monday, on a Tuesday, on a Wednesday and Thursday and Friday and Saturday, you do these certain things. You got to have a foundation. And I'll let you know why. Because if you have not planned, if you have nothing, if you have no specific time or specific location or specific um, time or location or prayers or anything that you do with the Lord during the week, then your flesh is going to lead you, not your spirit. So you got to build a devotional lifestyle of the Lord that when you go up a level, this foundation that you have built is able to keep throwing, is able to keep feeding that fire so that it doesn't go out. So you have to create some kind of devotional. On a Monday, what do you do on a Monday? 
Daniel prayed three times every day. You got to know something that you do on Monday. I'm not saying that on a Monday, you must only do these things with the Lord and then you're done. No, I'm saying that on Monday, these certain things that you must do, whether it's a fasting day, or whether it's, a, it's just a pure worship day, or just a day where you just use your prayer language, let it be a Monday. I'm not saying that after you've done these things, you're done with the day. I'm saying that you have to do these things to keep on feeding your fire. And you can even do things, more things than you just, you've done. More, more, you can even do more than you've just, you can, do, you can even do more right after you've done these things. And Tuesday, what do you do on Tuesday? What do you do on Wednesday? What do you do on Thursday? On Friday, what do you do on Sunday? You have to go, do you go to church on a Sunday? Do you go to two um, services on a Sunday? So you, we gotta have a schedule. Daniel prayed three times. And he was in a position of backsliding more than all of us because he was in Persia, he was in Babylon, and all of these countries and empires had foreign gods and pagan gods. His friends were pagans. His leader was a pagan. Most of the people around him, all of the people were pagans, but he never lost his fire. He was good in the sight of God. God loved him because he had a devotional life. So we as believers, we gotta have something. I mean, Jesus himself went to the mountains on specific days and spent the night with the Lord by praying and interceding. So if your next week, you have, no, you have nothing that you're gonna do with the Lord, if in your own mind that, if, you, if in your own mind, you don't even picture what your next week is gonna be with, it's going to be like with the Lord, then there is a big problem because you have no schedule, you have no devotion. And instead of your spirit leading you, your flesh is going to lead you. I'm going to give you an example. If you go in your Bible and you start to choose which books to read, a lot of times your flesh is going to choose it. Because if you go to the book of First Corinthians, your flesh is gonna say that this is too hard. You gotta do, you gotta do too many research, too much, too much, too, too much research. You gotta to read too much. You gotta to listen to many sermons, to too many sermons. So your flesh is gonna go, is gonna get you to read a book like Psalm because it's easier. But if in your week you knew that on a Wednesday, on this Wednesday you do a a, a First Corinthian, then you're gonna to have to do it, and your flesh will not be able to lead you because your spirit because you have set a devotional, just like you never forget to, to do your morning prayer, no matter how you feel, you will not forget to do that first Corinthian, no matter how bad you feel, no matter how hard it looks, you will do it because it is a schedule, because it is a devotional. I'm not talking about a religious schedule. I'm talking about a foundation to keep the fire burning within you. So if your week, if if your week, if in your week you have no foundation, if in your week you have no devotional, if your Monday, you don't even know how your Monday, your Monday and your Tuesday looks with the Lord, if you just pick and choose which prayers you will do this day and which sermon you will watch this day, and you have to, you just do nothing else, but you just speak and choose, okay, today. I'm going to read this or today I'm going to do this. Today I'm going to do this. If you're not spiritually mature enough, you'll find yourself being led by your flesh. I used to have two dogs like that, like twins, but they died seven years ago, broke my heart. I, met, I got. So just to close it, pride will make us think that we don't need a schedule. Pride will say that we are too spiritual to follow something. I mean, and pride will let us think that we're too spiritual to follow a certain devotional, that we want to be led by the spirit in whatever we want to do. On a Monday, we just want to be led by the spirit. But a lot of times you realize that you're being led by your flesh, that you'll pick and choose the smallest things, the easiest things. You know, instead of doing what is hard, 
and I'm going to stop it here. Heavenly Father, I just pray that this word will speak to anyone, Father God, that you'll teach us how to keep our fire. Lord Jesus Christ, let us see how our next week will be with you, Father. That on a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday and a Friday and a Saturday, we know how and what we will do with you. And sometimes you'll even lead us to do more than we expected. We just don't want to go into our week blindfolded and expecting to, for, to do things and we don't even know what we're going to do. You know, let us have a devotional and a way of living to keep this fire burning within us so that we don't go up and down, up and down, up and down, ready to warfare and ready to just cry and up and down, up and down, Father. I pray for these viewers that you help them, Father, keep their fire. Help us build this devotional and help us with wisdom build this foundation to keep our fire. On a Monday, do you want us to intercede? Do you want us to fast every Wednesday? On a Sunday, do you want us to go to two services and just spend the whole day thanking you? So help us have a week where there is already a foundation laid for us. And then you will lead us if we need to do, if we need to do more that very day. But let us have some type of foundation that we can walk on and to keep feeding our bodies with the fire that we need to keep thinking like warriors, to keep acting like warriors, Jesus. Amen.